All this is Dr. Mubeen Sayyid from drmubeen.com. Welcome to one more show. So today we're going to talk about the Epstein-Barr virus uh, serology or the labs that are used to detect various stages of this virus and infectious mononucleosis. And not only just the mononucleosis, but the cancers caused by the EBV as well. Just one quick heads up. Today, this morning, my battery got short for some reason. My computer's battery, not my battery. And so computer had shut down once. So if it shut down during the discussion, I would then leave the discussion. I'll buy the computer tomorrow and we'll continue on Monday. But I'm going to now try to share my screen. It is operating on the adapter and not the battery. And let's see if it works. So I have every other program uh, turned off. Let's hope it works fine with the screen sharing and doesn't need to use too many resources. And let's start. So the um, usual issue with the Epstein-Barr virus or infectious mononucleosis and the, um, the serology is that normally the charts that we see, the graphs that we see, they have the whole serology in one place and that causes confusion. So what I want to do is imagine a person who never had Epstein-Barr virus before. That may be a child, that may be a youngster, or that may be an adult. If that is the case, that would mean that they will have no antibody against the Epstein-Barr virus. Such a person is called susceptible to the Epstein-Barr virus because if the virus arrives in their body, it will cause infection. Now the virus itself, look at, let's look at the structure. I have a slice of the virus here. Imagine if this was some sort of a fruit and we opened it up from cutting it in the half. So here the outside of the virus, it is an enveloped virus. We discussed that yesterday. Outside is the envelope of the virus, this gray layer. On the envelope are glycoproteins or proteins, which are called envelope proteins. They are very similar, at least in structure like the SARS-CoV-2 uh, spike protein, but they're not exactly like a spike protein, meaning they are projections on the surface. Inside the membrane or the envelope is this blue layer, which I have made here. That is the matrix of the virus itself. So imagine there is a ball and on the ball, there is another ball. So there are two balls within each other. So the inner ball, is called the matrix of the virus. And then further inside is another tiny ball here in the purple color. That is the protective structure, which is around the brain of the virus or the DNA of the virus. So this purple structure in here is called the nucleocapsid or structure. Let's say it is the skull of the virus. And then inside the nucleocapsid is the DNA or double-stranded DNA of the virus. We did this discussion yesterday as well. Now, active virus. So now let's start from a person who did not have the infection before. That person becomes exposed to Epstein-Barr virus. That may be a childhood age where another child or a parent, somebody gave it to the child accidentally or more adult age. Whatever is the reason, we discussed that yesterday. Eventually, the person has the virus landing in their mouth. Once the virus is in the mouth area, we know that it would infect epithelial cells and the B cells. This will be called the primary infection. We are assuming that this person never had the infection before. When the primary infection occurs, the virus start making more daughter cells. And in that process of making more cells, the daughter viruses, the cell in which the B cell in which the viruses are made, these B cells will start getting broken down. And that is why this phase is called lytic phase or the cell will become broken. Like it would become lysed. So we're talking about the lytic phase. This is also called primary infection phase. And we would see that there are certain things that are common here with the reactivation of the virus 
or the chronic state of the virus. What is common here? In the reactivation, which we would see later on, virus starts becoming formed again. So, so the body would have these viruses again. Similarly, in the chronic state, chronic state is where the virus goes dormant or the viral genome is present in the B cells that are memory cells. Then those memory cells will wake up every few months or years. They'll make more viruses. Then those cells would go back to sleep and so on. So, of course, that means whenever the chronic state will convert into an active state of making more viruses, at that time, we will see the viruses. So we will see the virion in primary infection, during reactivation, and during chronic disease. Please remember, chronic disease is a different state compared to carrier state. In the carrier state, the memory B cells contain the viral genome and they're sleeping in the bone marrow. There is no virus itself, just the DNA material is present there. But in chronic state, virus goes into the DNA state, meaning its plasmid is present or episome, we call it, is present in the B cell nuclei. Then it becomes activated every so often, makes more virions. Then it goes back into the previous state. So chronic is an interesting activation, deactivation state. OK. Now, why this whole discussion is important, when the virus arrives in our body, when we make viruses, our cells make viruses, we make our immune system starts making antibodies against the viral antigens. And the most important antibodies in the beginning will be immunoglobulin M. We know this that B cells from our previous discussions, we know that B cells will first of all start making IgM, immunoglobulin M. Immunoglobulin M is usually short lived. May that be for SARS CoV 2 or for this virus or some other pathology, pathogen. IgM will be made for some weeks and then IgM will go away. Then IgG will sustain. Now, when does the IgG itself start getting made? In some pathogens, the IgG would start second week, third week. SARS-CoV-2, the IgG starts right away. Similarly, Epstein-Barr virus or infectious mononucleosis, the IgG is started right away as well. So if we go down here, what are the antibodies we are making? As soon as the virus starts getting increased in our throat, and our immune system starts attacking the virus and the virally infected B cells, our immune system will start making antibodies. And those antibodies are going to be IgM and IgG. And what are these antibodies against? They are against the nucleocapsid, this part, the skull of the virus, the protective layer around the DNA of the virus. That is nucleocapsid. We start making IgM and IgG against the nucleocapsid. In addition to this, the sick B cell, the B cell that got infected, that would start making heterophile antibodies. What does that mean? Imagine me for a second. I am a B cell who got infected by the virus. So I'm not a functional B cell. I am an infected B cell. And virus will trigger me to produce antibodies, whatever antibodies. And I will end up making antibodies, which are not against this virus. Instead, these are against many kind of antigens. And one important antigen they are against is sheep and pig red blood cells. That's interesting. And it actually is of our use because we can detect those antibodies in a patient's plasma by putting the plasma on sheep's red blood cells. And if the antibodies attack the sheep's RBC, then we know that this, this antibody is present in the patient's plasma. That means this patient's plasma 
has sick B cells. So that is called heterophile antibody. Why is it called heterophile? Heterophile antibodies are the antibodies generated by a B cell, not against the pathogen to which that B cell attacks. Instead, they are just random antibodies that might attack something else. This is why we call them heterophile. So what are we going to see in the acute phase? So start from here. This is where the person has the infection. First of all, we will make viral capsid, that central part, the nucleocapsid. We'll make IgM against the viral capsid uh, antigen or the viral viruses capsid. This IgM will be produced for a couple of weeks and then this would go away, sometimes more than two weeks. At the same time, there is heterophile antibody being produced as well. The difference between IgM producing cell and the heterophile producing cell is the following. IgM producing cell are active B cell that are trying to defeat the virus. And heterophile creating B cells are the ones that are actually sick cells, that are the infected cells. Remember, EBV is the disease that attacks the B cells. So there are going to be sick B cells. Those B cells are producing heterophile antibodies. So that means you as a doctor, healthcare worker, a professional from healthcare side, if you look at heterophile antibodies positive, you'll see that, all right, this is an acute infection, the virus has been multiplying in B cells and these B cells are producing heterophile antibodies. When you also see IgM, then you know that there is immune cell activation as well against this virus and the B cells against the virus are making IgMs. So this is also an indication of acute infection. In addition to that, B cell, some of the B cell will start making IgG as well, which is immunoglobulin G that would sustain in this person forever throughout their whole life. IgG are supposed to be long-term immunoglobulins. So let me put this case in front of you. You receive a patient, has mono-like symptoms, you look at clinical history, you get their serology done. First thing you do is monospot test or heterophile antibodies. Usually heterophile antibody test is not very specific and sensitive, but still, let's say that comes back positive. Then you get the serology as well, and you get IgM positive as well. This means this person has acute infection. Now, do they have IgG? In some cases, majority of the cases, they will have IgG as well because IgG starts getting produced in the acute phase. But it is possible in some patients that IgG has not yet started getting produced, which is fine. If you have heterophile and IgM, patient has acute infection or primary infection or the patient is in lytic phase. Now, I said above here that the patient may be in reactive phase or reactivation phase or chronic state, I'm going to leave that for a second and discuss that a little later. So acute phase, we know how to find that. Now let's go to the second stage. So the virus infected someone. There was an acute phase of that. Then our immune system cells started killing the sick B cells. Which cells primarily kill the sick B cells? So look at this one. Let's say this B cell here, this is a sick cell. It is infected by the Epstein-Barr virus. Of course, this cell would start expressing the antigens on its surface, correct? We know this, that any cell that is infected and has a nucleate, any nucleated cell that is infected will present the antigen on its surface with MSC1 or MSC2, depending upon the cell's type. So here, if you see, the virus antigens are being produced. What are those antigens? Let's just look at that for a second. This is a sick, sick B cell. The sick B cell has this little red, 
sorry, this little red episomer plasmid sitting in the nucleus of the B cell. This plasmid usually becomes integrated near the chromosome of our, our cell. And it starts making this uh, genetic material of the virus only keeps one gene open or a small set of genes open and those genes start making EBNA, Epstein-Barr nuclear antigen. So nuclear antigen is a complex of six enzymes. What, what is the function of this complex? Epstein-Barr is at this time sleeping in this memory cell. This cell, this B cell, has become a memory cell. Remember, I discussed the phases yesterday. So there is a th phase 3, 2, and 1. This is phase 1 or phase 2. The cell has become a memory cell. It has the genetic material of the Epstein-Barr virus in it as well. That genetic material of the Epstein-Barr virus has gone quiet, and it is only making minimal number of proteins. Those proteins function is to allow the virus genetic material to be duplicated every time the cell, the B cell, the sick B cell duplicates. So what are those enzymes? These enzymes are called EBNAs, Epstein-Barr nuclear antigens. They are six enzymes, one to six. Antigen one, two, three, four, five, six. In addition to that, another three enzymes are made that are called late stage or latent MP enzymes. They actually appear on the membrane of the cell, the B cells, and they are proteins. So latent membrane proteins. They are three, one, two, and three. So a total of nine proteins are still being made by partially active DNA of the virus. So when that is happening, the B cell that is sick is going to present these antigens on its surface. And we know that it will not present the whole antigen. It will break down the antigen into smaller pieces, and then the smaller pieces of those antigens will be shown on the surface. When these antigens are shown on the surface, the cytotoxic B cells, CD8 plus B, I said B cell, CD8 plus T cells, cytotoxic, this is T helper one pathway, cytotoxic T cell will become active and they will kill these B cells that are sick. So in the blood of the patient, we will see active cytotoxic T cell or CD8 positive T cells, these cells are also called downy cell against for the doctor who found them. Or they are simply called atypical lymphocyte. And atypical lymphocyte does not mean that they are bad lymphocytes. They are actually active lymphocyte. They are fighting and killing the B cells that are infected. And they would appear, these atypical uh, lymphocytes, would appear in the blood as well, and we can see them in the peripheral blood picture. In addition to that, of course, the T helper 2 pathway is activated as well. That would mean there are going to be B cells that will become active. They will also connect with this sick B cell. One of their own is sick right now. They will become connected with this sick B cell. They would look at EBNA antigen, and they will make antibodies against EBNA. So it could be antibody against EBNA1 or 2 or 3 or 4 or 5 or 6 or all of them. But normally, B cells start making a lot of antibodies against EBNA1. And cytotoxic T cells start connecting with the antigen that is EBNA3. So EBNA3 triggers the cytotoxic T cells, and EBNA1 triggers the, the B cells. So the result of that is that in patients' blood, the B cells that are active and that are making antibodies against EBNA1, those antibodies can be detected. So now in this stage, 
this is a latent stage this is a dormant stage this is a stage where the b cell sick b cell is sleeping in bone marrow you would see two things in patients blood possibly active t cells now in chronic states active t cells are not always present if the b cells are sleeping in the bone marrow you won't see a typical t cell but if the reactivation occurs or if acute infection occurs then you would see a typical t cell however ebna antibodies ebna1 antibodies will only appear when the b cells are sleeping so whenever epstein barr virus is in a dormant state in a sleeping state in a phase 1 state latent state then ebna1 antibodies can be seen so that means if i go down here to the chart in this chart now we know that igm was there for the acute phase heterophile was there for the acute phase these will not be here anymore this is 4 months 6 months year later igd will be present against the viral capsid because it will be present forever and then this blue line here ebna we are actually here or here in the latent phase you would see ebna antibodies why would we see ebna antibodies and nothing else because we just saw that the virus is sitting in the dna and it is only making ebna and lmp proteins so of course our body would only attack what is being made and we are, the virus is only making ebnas so we would see antibodies against ebna so to detect a latent phase what would you see in the blood you would see igg against the viral capsid that is always present and you would see ebna1 now it is presumed that these two would always be present together or ebna1 will never be present without igg because igg is an indicator of the infection's start at some point however in a very tiny percentage of people about 3 4% of people and i have all the references in the description there is a possibility that igg is not showing up but still ebna1 is showing up it's a rarity it is not normal but it is possible so how will you detect the latent phase you would see igg viral capsid positive and you would see ebna1 igg positive as well you will you see igm no we are talking about a dormant stage igm was for the acute state will you see heterophile cells no because this virus is actually the whole virus is not active it is not bothering this b cell it is not making itself in the b cell it's only making some proteins so this b cell is not tickled too much it's not bothered too much because of that this b cell is in a is in a memory state in a dormant state it is not active it is not making heterophile antibodies so no heterophile no igm yes to igg vc viral capsid and yes to igg ebna1 it is also possible in some cases that another antigen called ea antigen may be present what is an ea antigen ea stands for early antigen when we have an acute infection by the virus let's go here when we have the acute infection by the virus and virus is replicating in the b cell part of its enzymes it makes a complex of enzymes that are together called early antigens these early antigens can be of two types some of them are found in cytoplasm of the cell and in the nucleus of the cell and some are only found in the cytoplasm and because of that they have a name the one that are present everywhere in the cell nucleus and the cytoplasm are called early antigen diffused they are diffused they are everywhere 
and those that are only in the cytoplasm we call them early antigen restricted they are only restricted to the cytoplasm it is possible that those early antigens in the beginning of the infection may be seen normally it is not seen so those antibodies are usually declined and gone or not even produced with the primary infection so this one ead may or may not be present in most cases not present that means for latent phase you are comfortable to say igg vc and igg ebna positive that is latent phase so if i go down here look at these retrophile not any more let me go to the past infection heterophile not any more igm not any more igg yes ebna yes what does this say this tells us that this person had the infection now the cells are carrying the dna and they are sleeping in the bone marrow so past infection now there is another situation where this cell we discussed it yesterday as well this cell gets the virus activated in it every so often every maybe year two year four year six months some months virus becomes active and what causes it to be active in the chronic state we do not know what causes it to be active in reactivation we know that other inf infections for example cytomegalovirus for example um or sars cov 2 nowadays other infections can activate the ebv if that happens we call that reactivation but if the virus just reactivates by itself makes more daughters then goes back to sleep then that is called a chronic state where the virus is coming alive and going down and coming alive and going down i'm using a, a loose term here alive and down but virus becomes active makes more virions then becomes latent again then goes back in lytic phase then goes back in latent phase that is called a chronic state in the chronic state think about this this virus this cell is going to start making new virions it's going to the plasmid is going to wake up when it is going to make new virions what is it that it is going to make it is going to make proteins that are more than ebna and lmp it's going to make more proteins of itself to make the whole body of the virus and one part of that is the early antigen so if if a person has early antigen present viral capsid igg present and ebna may or may not be present mostly not present and i'll explain why then that can be a chronic state and the question is why ebna1 is not present ebna1 is a state it is produced in a state when the virus itself is sleeping when virus becomes active it stops making ebna and it starts making other things but when it is sleeping the virus then it makes ebna so if ebna is positive that would make mean the virus is sleeping if the virus is sleeping then that cannot be an active state so in the chronic state if you want to see if the virus is active but chronic then we would have vc igg positive that means the virus was present and then ea positive as mean that means the virus just became active again and ebna would be negative in most of the cases in the reactivation where the virus was present before was sleeping and now has become active you may see this this structure if the virus has not become active but was present before and is sleeping then you would see vc igg that is an indicator the virus was present and ebna1 is is present that means the virus is sleeping 
You can think of EBNA1 as the snoring of the virus. When the virus is sleeping and snoring, you can hear that snore. What is that snore? EBNA1. So the virus is awake. Would you hear it snore? No. So whenever EBNA1 is missing, that means virus is not dormant. Whenever EBNA1 is present, that means virus is sleeping. And virus cannot be sleeping and present at the same time. So this is the latent stage. Now let's see reactivation stage. So once again, what is the difference in reactivation and chronic state? Reactivation is virus continues to sleep in a person, never wakes up until something wakes it up. That something is mostly unknown, but it could be SARS-CoV-2, it could be EBV, uh, sorry, CMV, it could be other herpes viruses, it could be HHV-6, it could be HIV. There are many other pathogens or immune conditions that might trigger this virus to wake up. If that is the case, then it is called reactivation. But if virus just wakes up by itself and sleeps and wakes up and sleeps, then it is called a chronic state. In both of those cases, the virus's DNA that is sitting in our DNA in a circular structure called episome, in both of these cases, that DNA will become linear or straight. That's another difference. That the DNA becomes linearized, it becomes straight. Then this DNA starts making the virus bodies. And part of those bodies, as I said before, early antigens are produced. And if you can see here, early antigen diffuse type and early antigen restricted type. And of course, when early antigens are produced, this B cell is going to present those antigens on its surface. And our other B cells are going to make antibodies against these antigens. And those antibodies will be detectable. That means when the virus has woken up and is making more viruses, then we would have EA become positive. So if you see here, look at this part. Forget about all of this. That was previously the case. Look at this part. This is a person who had mono at some point in their life. And because of that, they have VC or viral capsid IgG. When their virus becomes reactivated, their IgG levels would start increasing. This we can only tell if the person had previous reports of their IgG. If a person never had the previous report of an IgG, then we cannot compare and say that it is increasing or not. Meaning we need multiple reports to see if IgG is going up. If it is going up, IgG, and EBNA going down. Virus was snoring, sleeping, and now it is waking up. So EBNA, which is an indicator of sleeping virus, of course has to go down because the virus is becoming active. So EBNA will be going down, virus capsid IgG will be going up, and early antigen would start getting formed. This structure, this combination is indicator that virus has become reactivated or is in a chronic state. And within the chronic state, we are looking at the virus's cycle where it is active. Remember, in the chronic state, it goes active, then it becomes dormant, active, dormant. So every time it will become active, early antigen will become available because more body parts are being formed. And early antigen is part of the body parts. And whenever it is dormant, EA will go away because more body parts are not being formed. Isn't that cute? Isn't that interesting to see? So that means if we look at this structure here, what are we going to see? We are going to say VC IgG is present. It's always going to be present if a person became infected. So this is positive in all cases. EBNA will start going down because that means the virus is activating now. So the sleeping antibodies or the antigens or those antigens that are produced when this virus is in episome state or latent state one, those antibodies will go away. 
So this will reduce. And then, uh, sorry, this one. And then EA will start increasing, which means new body parts are being formed for the virus and new vi virions will be formed soon. So if I put them all together here in a table, and this is the problem that many of the um, lectures, books, articles, they talk about all of them together and ask you to kind of just memorize it. So that would be OK as well. But at least now we know how the life cycle of antigen and antibodies is. So let's look at it. Capsid antibodies, IgM and IgG, heterophile, early antigen, and EBNA1. If nothing is present, no antibody, then that mean, that person is called susceptible, meaning they might get infected if they are exposed, but they never were infected before. If they just became infected, then heterophile will be present. Heterophile's presence means the person became infected for the first time, and this is a primary infection. Most of the time, that is how heterophile is. It is possible to have heterophile in case of reactivation as well in some time, some cases, very tiny percentage. So I'm going to ignore that. Heterophile would mean first time infection. IgM will mean first time infection. IgG will mean first time. So all of these are positive. EA may or may not be positive. Many times, first time infection does not have EA because the other proteins have already triggered antibodies and our cytotoxic T cells have started killing these. So heterophile positive, IgM positive, IgG positive to viral capsid means acute infection. Chronic infection. Heterophile is not present. IgM is not present. IgG is always present in all states. EA is present. That means upward cycle, activation cycle of the chronic state. Then past infection. Patient had the infection or activation, but at this time, the virus is in episome state or latent phase two or three or sleeping. What does that mean? Heterophile, nothing. IgM to VC, nothing, viral capsid. IgG to viral capsid is always present. EA, negative because new body parts are not being formed because the virus is not active. And EBNA is positive because the virus is sleeping and it is making the sleeping antibodies, antigens. Reactivation. It was sleeping, it woke up. IgG positive, it's always positive. EA positive, new viruses are being formed. EBNA positive, it was sleeping and it is waking up. And ideally, this would start going down. This would go up. This is go up. So that is the uh, infections detection. Normally, if EBV is also associated with Burkitt's lymphoma or other lymphomas, usually you would also observe IgG positive, EA positive, and EBNA1 positive. We would talk about lymphomas at another time, but this is what we have. Now, there was a question that was asked yesterday. That was asked yesterday, and that was, <laughs> the, the, it can get this video taken down. Was the, is it possible that ivermectin helps with EBV, Epstein-Barr virus? And I wanted to do a separate talk, but my machine, as I discussed, is going down. So let me just put a little summary here. And if I get a chance, I'll do a separate talk today or Monday. The Epstein-Barr virus can act as a stimulatory system for the B cell. The B cell to which it infects, as I had said yesterday, it kind of tickles it. We would call it constitutional signaling. It can use, it can hijack, it can trap the cell's activation mechanism and trigger that. Normally, that activation mechanism, B cell activation mechanism, is used by T cell to activate the B cell. 
Remember T helper two cells activate B cells. How do they activate? They connect with the B cell with CD40 proteins. And when they connect with the B cell with the CD40 and they stimulate the B cell, inside the B cell, nuclear factor kappa B and JAK stat pathways are activated. This secondary signaling mechanism. Imagine if you ring a bell on somebody's house and somebody from inside comes in and to the door and says, who is there? So the inside, somebody who comes to the door is nuclear factor kappa B or K beta and the JAK stat. Epstein-Barr virus, without any T cell, without anybody pressing the doorbell, it actually acts like a naughty child who presses the doorbell internally. Imagine if you are trying to you know, bother your parents when you are young and you go outside and you press the doorbell and then close the door and come back inside. And now parents are outside trying to see who just rang the doorbell. That's what it does. And what it does is it activates the nuclear factor K beta and Jack stat pathway, which then causes the B cell to be active without T cell asking it to be active. And guess which medicine blocks this pathway? Nuclear factor K beta and Jack stat. Ivermectin blocks it. So that means not only COVID long haul state that may be because of EBV reactivation, but EBV itself, mononucleosis itself with the chronic state or the reactivated state will benefit from Ivermectin, at least from a mechanism point of view. So this is the discussion. This was a question <laughs> yesterday. So I wanted to make sure that this question is answered because many folks said yesterday in comments that, hey, I've been suffering with this mono for years. Somebody actually said for 40 years. And I wanted to make sure that I mentioned this. So I'm going to come back live again in a second. It looks like my computer is holding up. And I would draw it for you. But if I could not come up, then at least know that, yes, it would help with mono's acute or reactivation state or chronic state, even long haul state. So uh, I'm going to hang up now. Please do me a favor. Please, if you like this work, like, subscribe, and share. And if you would like to support this work as well, then there are links in the description. You can use PayPal link to support it, or you can buy me a coffee, or you can be a patron. I'm going to come back live in a few minutes. Thanks.